Hey everybody, welcome back to uh, Living Traditions Homestead. My name is Kevin, this is my wife Sarah, and today is going to be the final video of us uh, processing our pigs for this year. We've got the loins out here, we're going to start uh, with these, we're going to start by making our pork chops today, and uh, getting some roasts. So, uh, like, like I've said in our past videos, uh, this is our first year processing our own pigs. We've raised pigs before. Uh, but this is the first year we're doing the entire thing ourselves. Uh, so far I'm very happy with the way it turns out, but we're by no means uh, professionals. Uh, so we're just doing the best that we can, but we thought we'd uh, share with you what we're learning and uh, share, share with you uh, what we don't yet know. So uh, we're going to get busy cutting these up into the pork chops and we'll see what we end up with. Alright, so we're going to uh, cut our pork chops uh, pretty thick. Uh, because, first of all, it's just easiest to do it this way. You can just cut right between all of the ribs, uh, and then you just end up with your pork chops however you know thick that, that cut is. So, uh, the first thing we're going to do is just cut all of the meat between the ribs. And once we get all of these cut between every rib, then we'll come back with the bone saw. Alright, so now we've got that cut between all the ribs. We're just going to flip it again. And we'll just take our bone saw and we'll just cut all of these apart. Alright, so I've got all of those bones cut. Now we'll just come back with our uh, knife one more time and just finish cutting through. They may not be perfect, but we're doing it all ourselves, and that's the important thing to us. Look at those. Those are gorgeous, though. You can't buy those at Walmart. So there you go. There's the pork chops off of one half. And so what we're left with is this nice roast here. Um, last time I cut the bone out of this roast on our other pig. Uh, but this time I decided I'm going to just leave the bone in and we'll just package it up and uh, be able to have this as a nice bone in roast. A lot of times those bones just give some good flavor when you cook them. So we're going to just leave this as is and package that up. Now that we're done with the loins, the next piece that we're going to move on to is the uh, pork bellies. Uh, so we've got both of them uh, here, both sides. Uh, and then we also have the two uh, tenderloins. Now these will package up by themselves. Uh, there's not really anything else to do with those other than package them up. Uh, as far as the bellies go, um, now this is where your bacon comes from. So um, the first thing we need to do is remove uh, this lower uh, part of the ribs. These are your spare ribs. Um, and all we'll do for that is just take a, a knife and just kind of uh, cut underneath those. And we'll just cut those off from the belly. All right, so there's your spare ribs. And there's still a little bit of bone in here. I'll just need to go through and trim some of that out. But then this, this is your pork belly. So this is where your bacon comes from. So we're gonna leave quite a bit of the fat on there. Uh, and then I'll just end up cutting this in half and we'll package each half uh, separately. So when we get ready to make bacon, uh, I can thaw out just one piece at a time. All right, so this is all finished up. We got the four sections of belly and then two uh, spare ribs here. So more delicious meat for the freezer. Uh, we're gonna get this packaged up and then we'll move on to the shoulders. So before I package these up in paper, 
I really like to put them in just some cheap twist tie bags. Um, I just really like to contain any of the moisture that will, when it's, you know, thaws out, it just kind of bleeds a little bit or has some moisture. And I don't like that getting on the paper and then dripping out of the paper. Um, so this is one of those pork belly halves that I just folded in half, put in the, pa in the plastic, and then I double wrap it in uh, butcher paper. And then we just add a piece of tape. You know, we don't buy special tape at all. For years and years, we've been using scotch tape to package our meat and it has been just fine. Then I just write on there what it is. Got one of the shoulders here and it's time to kind of break this down into the pieces. Now, shoulders are a little bit harder than the pieces that we've already done. Uh, so I'm gonna walk you through a little bit I think I've got a pretty good handle on it. This is going to be now the fourth one that I've done. So, um, you basically you have your hock uh, right here. You have your picnic roast right here. And your Boston butt right here. Boston butt is not at the back of the pig. It's at the front of the pig. So, there you go. Um, so, first thing we're going to do is flip this over. And we're going to take out um, this where the spine is and where part of the ribs still are. We're going to get that off so we're working with just the shoulder. So I'm just going to take a knife and just cut as close to that bone as I can and we'll get that taken all the way out. Alright, so I've got that all cut off and that will just go off to the side in our bone pile for again for Sarah to make bone broth. All right, so now we can cut this into the roasts. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this about in half. And again, this is the butt back here and this is the picnic. Um, it's The reason that this is a harder thing to do is because there's a bone that isn't very fun, but you have to get it out. Well, you don't have to, but what we like to do is cut the Boston butt into two separate roasts. Uh, and in order to do that, it's the best to have that bone out. So we're just going to cut this as much as we can. First, all the way around with a knife. All right, so we've got that cut in half, and you can see this flat bone. That's what we need to now take our knife and just work at it till we get that out. There we go, there's that bone. Again, that'll go in our pile for bone broth. And then this, that's our Boston butt. Now again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this in half so that we have two roasts. All right, so now we're going to take off the hock so that we're left with the uh, picnic roast as well. And this we'll just cut with our bone saw as well. All right, so there you go. That's everything that you get from the shoulder. Now, if you didn't want the roasts, you could grind this or do something else with it. Uh, we ground a lot of it on the first pig that we did, so on this one we're going to keep these as roasts. Uh, but again, the two uh, Boston butts, the uh, picnic, and the hock. Last thing that we have left is the uh, back legs, so the hams. So I'm going to go get those out of the refrigerator and we'll start on those. Alright, so the final two pieces of this pig are the two hams. Now, what we're going to do today is we're going to just cut all of this up and we're going to grind it. Uh, like I talked about in one of our other videos, uh, for us on our homestead, ground meat just is, you know, the most important thing that we have. Um, you know, you can make roasts and you can make all this other stuff, but, you know, then you're using, you know, maybe three pounds, four pounds of pork per meal. 
Uh, with ground, normally we take it out one pound at a time. We freeze it in one pound sections and you know then we're only using one pound per meal and that just really makes it go further. Uh, when you're raising all of your own food, um, you know, you got to make it go as far as you can. So we've got a plan where Sarah and I are going to be cutting up these hams. We had Samantha come out and Samantha's going to be running the meat grinder for us. And we're just going to get this done as fast as we can because it's about an hour until dark and it's starting to get cold even here in the greenhouse. So we need to get going. Well, we're all finished up. Look at this. This is awesome. Uh, and the best part is that we did it all ourselves. Uh, from getting the piglets, to raising them all summer, to uh, slaughtering them, and now butchering it into what goes into the freezer. Um, just let's go over real quick uh, everything that we ended up getting here. Uh, just now remember this is one pig and we did two pigs this year. And so. it's actually our smallest pig. Yeah, this was the smallest of the three pigs that we raised. So um, we ended up with uh, six packs of pork chops, uh, nice big thick pork chops, uh, not those puny thin things you get in the <laughs> store. Uh, so six of those with four chops in each package, um, a nice uh, pork loin roast, um, and then I cut up some pork steaks, which we're actually going to have those grilled for dinner tonight. Uh, and then from the hams, we ended up with 36 pounds of ground pork. Over here we have um, our four packages of the pork bellies, which will become bacon. Uh, some really nice two big uh, picnic roasts. Uh, so a bunch of pork hocks, the two pork tenderloins, the Boston butts, and our spare ribs. So that's, you know, a good way to fill up the freezer. We're so excited. Uh, it's been three years since we've been able to raise a pig from, uh, because when we moved from Arizona to Missouri, we just weren't ready for it. So uh, we're excited to finally have the freezer filled up. Hey you guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed seeing this entire process. Uh, check out the playlist we put together uh, when we raised the pigs all summer and everything that we've done with them. Uh, don't forget to share this on all your social media and hit that subscribe button before you leave. Until next time, thanks so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.